Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Real Report. We've got a lot of things to cover, so stick around. We're going to be covering things on Russia-Ukraine with the new Belgorod nuke sub heading into the Arctic from the Russians, talking about the Russian offensive campaign in Ukraine, gas flows, and qui bono, the big question of who benefits from the Nord Stream pipeline going kablooey, Blinken calling the sabotage a uh, opportunity, Russian gas stops flowing to a country that we're going to cover... Uh, they're also, <laughs> Russia says they know who's behind the sabotage as a former Pentagon advisor makes a call. And guess what? Another food processor goes offline. Also got a little bit on a river in the U.S. And of course, U.K. Prime Minister Liz Truss is an absolute disaster as the U.K. plunges into... <laughs> What is certainly going to be a recession as the pound is almost in equilibrium with the dollar or will be shortly. So again, what you're looking at right here is liveuamap.com and then you can check different regions like Ukraine, USA, Syria, Israel, Palestine, and of course, zoom in. They've got a uh, pretty useful key, so you can take a look at uh, when you click the alerts, uh, like explosions were audible in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, again, Russian Army conducted 11 missile strikes, and then you can read the description. So definitely an interesting tool. You guys can check that one out as a free resource uh, every day for developments, again, with a live map. Now getting into the meat here, Russia is testing a nuke drone Poseidon UUV from its gigantic Belgorod nuclear submarine. It's about to undertake the first ever test of Russia's Poseidon nuclear torpedoes, the largest submarine built in over four years. Years inducted by the Russian Navy in July, Poseidon Unmanned Underwater Vehicle. That's what UUV stands for. The mission is to test for the first time the super torpedo Poseidon, often referred to as the quote weapon of the apocalypse. The Belgorod Special Purpose Submarine is an expansive customized special purpose submarine constructed from the hull of an Oscar II cruise missile submarine that was never completed. It's about 604 feet long. Now, again, guys, if you're new here, go ahead and leave a like, comment down below anything interesting throughout the article, share at least with one other person, and subscribe. Now, the Belgorod will be manned by the Russian Navy sailors, but run by the GUGI, the secretive main directorate, deep sea research organization. It remains an earlier generation of submarines and is likely to be less stealthy than the latest generation. However, the submarine is said to have a speed of about 60 kilometers per hour and can reportedly remain underwater for about 120 days. First is to act as a host submarine or a mothership to the small nuclear-powered submarines that can dive deeply. And the second is a nuclear strike and deterrence vessel, as per the analysis. To carry out a nuclear strike, Belgorod will carry six nuclear-tipped Poseidon UUVs. And it was unveiled during a speech in 2018. The Sarmat Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles are on board. The Avangard Hypersonic Glide Vehicles, Cruise Missiles, Air Launched Hypersonic Missiles, and Ship Launched Hypersonic Missiles. Its operating depth is about 1,000 meters, and Russians have long wanted to circumvent the American ballistic missile defense systems deployed in Europe, which they're able to do with submarines. The U.S. has a network of satellites equipped with infrared sensors to detect and track Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles in the air. However, the ignition of the missile engine generates extreme heat, creating a temperature difference against the cold background for the satellites overhead to pick up. They're talking about this will most likely be deployed after its trip in the Arctic to the Pacific, threatening U.S. naval bases on the West Coast and key cities. Russia intends to deploy over 30 Poseidon UUVs. Another article about that. Of course, Russian nuclear submarine armed with doomsday weapon disappears from Arctic Harbor. Again, Putin's Belgorod submarine is said to be capable of creating a 1,600-foot radioactive tsunami. So, in case you guys were hoping for a nuclear winter, well, it might just be a surf instead. The drone can be deployed from the submarine at any time and detonated at a depth of one kilometer. Top military brass in Ukraine South calls for volunteers as forces look to take back Kyrgyzstan as we get into the summary in about 30 seconds. There have been times where Russian nuclear-powered attack submarines armed with long-range cruise missiles operated undetected for weeks close to U.S. shores. Big takeaway here for us. 
uh, in the U.S., of course. One incident in the early 2010s saw the submarine get detected only when it was leaving U.S. waters. If any of you remember, that was a big deal. Now, looking at the key inflections in the ongoing military operation from last night, Ukrainian forces continue to liberate settlements east and northeast of Lyman and have liberated quite a bit of area in the Donetsk Oblast region. Russian sources claim that Russian forces withdrew from their positions northeast of Lyman. I think a big concern for this is going to be why they're pulling back if they want the Ukrainians to push into the newly. Regardless of what you think about the referendums, bringing more territory into the Russian Federation is absolutely irrelevant. The question is if they are backing troops off, so when Ukraine goes on the offensive into the now Russian uh, annexed regions. It'll be a act of war and uh, big question on the line is going to be if Putin's going to use small scale tactical nukes on the front line. Now, of course, Ukrainian forces continue to advance on the settlements east, east of Kupyansk and liberated Kharkiv Oblast. Russian forces continue to launch unsuccessful assaults around Bakhmut and Vyimka. Ukrainian forces resume counteroffensives in northern Kyrgyzstan. And, of course, they're still using a lot of Iranian-made Shahed-136 drones, the Kamikaze suicide drones. Now, Russian state's Duma MPs, here's an interesting one that I'd like a follow-up on, withdrew a law that would have given mobilized men a one-time payment of 300,000 rubles, or about five grand U.S., and other benefits. Putin submitted a draft law to the state Duma on admitting the Donetsk, Luhansk, People's Republics, Zavorizhia, and Kyrgyzstan Oblast to the Russian Federation as that becomes uh, formal again, regardless of what you think, it does not matter. Blinken calls sabotage attacks on Nord Stream pipelines a tremendous opportunity. Here's where things get very interesting. Administration has bluntly and apparently lacking self-awareness boasted that the pipeline bombings present an opportunity. I really couldn't believe this, so I'll let you listen to it for yourself here. Ultimately. This is also a tremendous opportunity. It's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy and thus to take away from uh, Vladimir Putin the weaponization of energy as a means of advancing uh, his uh, imperial designs. Uh, that's very significant and, and that offers tremendous um, strategic opportunity for, um, for the years to come. But meanwhile, we're determined to do everything we possibly can uh, to make sure that the consequences of all of this are not borne by citizens in our countries or for that matter around the world which they absolutely will the commoners always pay the highest penalty for people like this now of course the mystery sabotage incident as he says secretary blinken said uh, again tremendous opportunity to greatly reduce european energy imports on russia now the crazy thing is is during the speech it was mentioned multiple times at the same time he touted the united states has now become well the leading supplier of liquefied natural gas to europe ah interesting benefit the administration is helping to enable european leaders to decrease the demand and speed up the transition to renewables i'm sure renewables uh, are really going to make a difference this winter for those in germany currently cutting down green wood which is not going to burn very efficiently and is going to be worse for the environment than many other forms and, of course, the Canadian counterpart, who was also on the stage with Blinken, said, well, the exact same thing. They repeated the word opportunity while highlighting the European energy crisis no less than three times. So, of course, always worth watching as everyone stands around pointing fingers. To go along with that, the former Pentagon advisor says we likely attacked Nord Stream pipelines to isolate Germany. This is probably the most... Uh, clear-cut explanation to prevent Germany from bailing on the war in Ukraine. Uh, would the Russians destroy their own pipeline? Question. 40% of the Russian gross national product or gross domestic product consists of foreign currency that comes into the country to purchase natural gas, oil, coal, and so forth. So, they're claiming the Russians did not do this. The notion that they did, I think, is absurd. Again, that's from a Pentagon advisor or... Uh, 
former advisor to the U.S. Defense Secretary and the administration of Trump, to be specific. Now, he says also, it's very clear that we have foreclosed Berlin's options. Berlin was drifting away from the alliance. Scholl said he wasn't going to send any more equipment. Quote, I won't send any tanks. Well, now he's in a bind because we've robbed him of the option of bailing out. Who's going to supply Germany? They're saying him, but that's Germany. With gas, oil, coal, and everything else, if he bails out, where does he turn now? Who can he turn to now? That's the bigger question. And remember, the Germans are facing terrible consequences at home, refuse to start nuclear power plants, which is going to make things again this winter even worse as they're committing suicide. Both Jiden, an Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Newland asserted that Nord Stream 2 wouldn't be allowed to operate if Russia attacked Ukraine. Mm -hmm. CIA warned Berlin about possible attacks on gas pipelines in the summer, which I covered in my past two videos on Nord Stream, so check those out as well. Gas starts flowing to Poland. Again, who benefits? Gas starts flowing to Poland via the new Baltic pipe from Norway. Natural gas started flowing to Poland through the new Baltic pipeline from Norway via the Baltic Sea on the morning of October 1st, Polish gas pipeline operator Gas Systems said the pipeline is at the center of Poland's long-standing strategy to diversify, ah, yes, its gas supplies away from Russia. As Russian gas stops flowing to Italy after a, quote, problem in Austria. Gazprom informed that it is not able to confirm the gas volumes requested for today, stating that uh, it's not possible to supply the gas through Austria. Now, interesting one, we are working to check with Gazprom whether it is possible to reactivate the flows to Italy. As Gazprom said, Nat gas flows from Austria to Italy were suspended because the Austrian operator refused to confirm transport nominations after recent regulatory changes. Yes, I'm sure. So, now that they're not able to play these games with Germany. Uh, the Russians are playing the same energy game, coin, on Italy. Italy imports 95% of its natural gas, which is about 45% came from the Russians. Now, of course, Nord Stream sabotage. Russia, again, saying they didn't do it, but they know who did. Uh, of course, know who did is a finger at the west dangerously low moving on from those headlines dangerously low mississippi river level may spark transport chaos for farm goods during harvest season as i've talked about food insecurities and the issues that are going to be absolutely catastrophic going into 2023 uh, barge rates in the past week jumped 50 percent from a year ago and on top of that, talking about food, one of the Northern Europe's largest vegetable brands, Hack, is shutting down its entire production for six weeks due to energy costs, the company said on October 3rd, just this afternoon. And of course, an interesting one on top of food and famine. What is a famine? According to the Norwegian Refugee Council, they're talking about Somalia stands on the brink of famine. After months of catastrophic drought, the United Nations has issued a final warning as the most dangerous period of the crisis approaches. I'm not going to read this one because it was posted by Michael Jan, so if you guys haven't checked him out, definitely go do that because he is an absolute wealth of insight. But they're talking about the five phases of food insecurity, minimal stress, crisis, emergency, and famine. Famine, people are unable to access food or meet their other basic needs. At least one in five households face extreme food shortages, and at least 30% of children suffer from acute malnutrition. Each day, at least two out of every 10,000 people die of starvation or malnutrition-related disease and then they go on to talk about what system they would like to implement but definitely a lot of things going on a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes continue to stock up continue to prep uh, again if you guys find any of this interesting definitely hit the like button i will see you guys in the next one take care